folks. Welcome to another Wednesday night. Good to be with you tonight. You know, I was thinking this recently uh, about some things, how life can be so fleeting. And, uh, you know, the older I get, the more I want to finish strong, live long, finish strong, and finish my course. And, and today I want to talk to you about that because there, we want to finish our race, our course, our what God has given us to do in this life, because we're, we're going to all stand before him someday, before Jesus, and give account for what we've done. And he wants us, he gives us all specific things to do, and he, he, he's called us all to, to walk after heart after him. And Paul was, uh, Paul was our example uh, more than anything else. He was our example. Uh, Jesus, obviously, was our example, too. But Paul talks about running his race and finishing his course, and I'll mention that in a minute. But he says over in, in Philippians, one of my favorite, chapter 4, one of my favorite uh, passages of, of Scripture, he says, uh, Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it. See, we can't say, well, I've, I've done all my part. <laughs> How can you say that about somebody that died for you and is going to give you eternal life? You, have you done your part? No, we keep working towards the goals of what he's given us. He says, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that, that, uh, which are behind and reaching forward uh, to those things which are ahead. There's, there's more for you. There's more for me. Uh, we don't, when you're running this race, we run, what, to keep going. We don't stop and say, okay, I've done my part. Uh, uh, but he also goes on to say, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm pressing in. I'm, I'm not holding back. I want to keep going. It's important that we have that resolve, that, that attitude. You know, so I know sometimes it's easy to get comfortable and get complacent and kind of, oh, just give a big sigh and, oh, no, what do we do? We get up and keep going. Uh, well, even when you have problems, even when you go through things, you just say, no, I'm not quitting. Amen? Amen. But over in, in uh, 2 Timothy, he's encouraging Timothy, who was a young pastor, and he's saying uh, in verse uh, chapter 4, verse 6, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. In other words, he's getting ready to go on to heaven. I have fought the good fight. I mean, you know, life can be a fight sometimes. It, it, there are so many obstacles in life, and it may a uh, fight, but we don't give up. We don't quit. He said, I have finished the race or the course that was laid out for me. You know, uh, we all have this course that's laid out. God laid us out in a course, and he says, I've finished that. Isn't that the goal, is to finish the race? And, and he says, I have kept the faith. And he says, because of that, because of that, that, he says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness with the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. In other words, you run your course because there is a crown to be won. Amen? A crown to be had. Down in the uh, notes I have down here, it says, whether Paul regarded his life as a battle, a race, or a test, of the truth of the gospel, he had achieved victory. The past, with its many duties, had been completed. The present is secure in faith. The future promises rewards. Amen. This is what we have to think about. Running our race, keeping on course. But see, there is an enemy. Listen, we have enemies that are trying to steal from us. Do you know that? The number one enemy is, is Satan. Satan, what's, what's John 10, 10 said? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's an equal opportunity destroyer. <laughs> he wants to take away your life. He wants to take away what God has provided for you. But we have to know that. So we have to do certain things. I, I was uh, uh, over in First Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to read quite a few scriptures because it's important we see uh, what the Word of God says about it rather than my own opinions. And we all have one, right? <laughs> But Peter's writing uh, here, and he's saying, uh, let's, read, let's read verse 5, and 5 verse 5. Likewise, you younger, or su su uh, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Listen, 
God, God doesn't say he will humble us. He's, he says, humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God, right? God resists the proud, but gives what? Grace, grace to run that race, grace to do what he's called us to do. Not looking back, not looking at uh, what's been past, looking ahead, pressing forward, pressing towards that tape that on these track runners. You know, uh, my grand girl, uh, kid, girls, a couple of my grand girls are running track and doing track and some of the other kids here. And, and they have to run to win the race and they, they hit that tape to go across the finish line and win the race, amen? Therefore, humble yourselves. Yeah, humble yourself. Don't be arrogant or prideful or cocky or whatever you want to call it. Under the mighty hand of God that he might, what? Exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now, it says this. This is so important for us today. Be sober. Don't be drunk with the cares of the world. That's what he's saying. Don't be drunk with the, 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 the issues of life because there are so many issues, are there not? And be vigilant. You know, vig, you know vigilance is being on guard. You know, if you're uh, having been in the, uh, in the Navy and been in the service, if you're on duty, uh, I, our, our thing was, my thing was I was in navigation, so I was on the bridge of a, uh, of a carrier. And when I was on duty, you had to be vigilant. You had to watch things. You had to watch for things. You had to, uh, whatever your duties were, you had to be vigilant about it. You couldn't be <clears throat> falling off to sleep and, and taking everything like, well, it's no big deal. It can be a very big deal. Because it says, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for somebody he can devour. That's why when we separate ourselves from the from the body, you ever ever a wild kingdom, you know, ever watch those shows where the the uh, the uh, lions or the hyenas or whoever uh, uh, the predators will come after the ones that are separated from the group, or they're weak, or you know they always go after them. That's the same thing the enemy does when we don't when we don't associate with uh, with the church when we don't associate with other believers when we're staying. Oh, isolated to ourselves, we're a candidate to be uh, be devoured, really. Resist him. This is what we're to do. Resist him steadfast in the faith. We're to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're, we, we, we don't, you know, listen, my friends, everyone is tempted. Everyone has things that come against us. You, you, we're not, you're not the Lone Ranger. You're not the only one that's ever had a problem. But, but we're to resist the enemy, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So what others are going through it, you know, others are going through it. And, and, and so, but we have to resist that word resist them. The active imperative indicates as a, uh, the stance against the adversary's operation. Now, that brings us over to Ephesians chapter six, uh, verse 10. Uh, six or six, ten through thirteen, and uh, it's important that we know these things. See, as many times if we don't know what the Word of God says, we're going to be deceived, and that's one of the enemy's number one tactics is deceive us. But when you know the truth, <laughs> there's so many voices in the world today, and many of them aren't truth. You know what I'm saying? But here's what he says: Finally, brethren, and and and. Ephesians 6, verse 10. My brother, be strong in yourselves. Be strong in, no, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. How many of you know God is more powerful than we are? So be strong in him. Goes on to say, put on the what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That what What's wiles? It means his, uh, his uh, attacks against you, his his uh, strategies and his, his things that he'll bring against you that they'll deceive you and, and cause you to do things you don't want to do or, or uh, things that are coming against you that you can't see. Amen. So he says, stand strong uh, and be able to stand against those wiles for we do not wrestle against what? And you hear these scriptures I all, quite often when I, I teach or preach or whatever because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. 
that person that's giving you a hard time is not really, <laughs> is he really your enemy? No, he's not. He's being perpetrated by, well, here's what he's being perpetrated. Uh, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, he says, take up this whole armor, put on the armor of God. And he'll, he tells us in verse 14 through 17 what that armor is. But that you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day and having done all, everything you've done, you're going to be able to stand. The wind's not going to blow you over. And, and have you ever watched that, uh, uh, those hurricanes that roll in? If, <laughs> if, if The things that aren't plugged in, aren't anchored to something, are going to blow away. And, and see, the enemy can come in like that. If you're not, if you're not uh, armed with the power of God, and he tells us all these other things like, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. How many of you know you get fiery darts? Thoughts. We'll talk about that a little bit. Thoughts are... This is what the enemy uses against us so much. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Get the sword of the spirit. What That sword coming out of your mouth, amen, defeats the devil. And, and uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always. This is setting you up to pray uh, a strong uh, uh, um, prayers that, that have meaning, that get through. Amen? Now, the prayers of the righteous, that's who we are. And goes on to talk about that. So we have to know <clears throat> his, one of his number one um, things that he uses against us is our thought life. That's why he says, put that stuff on. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Be vigilant. Be sober. Don't let him get in your mind, in your head. Because he'll use what? Discouragement. Despair. Fearfulness confusion and, de and or de uh, deception or lust or whatever. He'll use those things. So we have to take control of our thought life, which Second uh, Chronicles 10 verses 4 and 5 talks about pulling down, Paul did, those strongholds, those things that enter your mind that causes you to rise up against the things that God has for you. If you're going to run this race, which you are, be assured you can run this race. He's no... As much as uh, the devil is an equal opportunity destroyer, God's an equal opportunity blesser and, and gives you abundance. Amen? But you got to know what he said. you got to know what the Word of God says. You know, it's important that we think right. That we think right. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7, I use this quite often, tells us as what we think is who we become, who we are. As a man thinketh, so is he. Amen? So what did Jesus do? Jesus was tempted uh, far more than we'll probably ever be tempted because he had more to give up, did he not? He came down from heaven, but and and the devil tempted him. But how did he how did he react to that? Well, we find that over in Luke chapter four, and I love this passage of scripture. There's, you know, I like all the word of God, but but there's stuff that you really I really gravitate to, which tells me helps me out overcome the enemy. How many of you want to overcome tonight? We all want to overcome, don't we? Don't stand, don't let the devil run over you. But here's what Jesus did. In Luke chapter 4, and we find that he had just been baptized by the prophet John the Baptist. And it says in verse 1 of, of chapter 4, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't it important to be filled with the Holy Spirit mightily? Returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. Nothing. It says being tempted by the, for 40 days by the devil. Do you know every day he was being tempted? That's what this says to me. Wasn't He didn't fast for 40 days and then be tempted. No, he was tempted every day. And in those days, he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Well, I guess you would be. We can only go about four hours without being hungry. You know, we got to have something to munch on or eat or whatever. 
And, it, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command these, this, this stone to become bread. Now, where did he uh, say? He told it in his mind. He's thinking it. He comes at him and telling him, if, if, this, if, if you are the son of God, isn't that the way the devil, if you really are born again, if you really know Jesus, why are you acting like this? Why is this not happening for you? What's going on with you? See, if you really think you're born again, no, you're just an old sinner saved by grace. We're not old sinners. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And those old things have passed away according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Amen? But Jesus answered him saying, this is how, this is taking that sword of the spirit and put it in operation. It is written, hallelujah. If you know what's written, you can use it. <laughs> he gives it to us freely. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. How are we to live? Not by the food that we eat, by bread, natural things, but by the word of God. Amen. Then the devil, isn't that like the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to, uh, to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you, if you will worship me before me, all will be yours. You know, a lot of people in the world today have, have, have given up their right. <laughs> They're worshiping the enemy for somebody, something of, for natural means. We can't do that. We have to worship the Lord, our God. But the devil said, if you'll worship me, I'll give you all these things. Then Jesus answered and said, said to him, what did he say? Get behind me, Satan, for it is written there again, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. How I many of you know if you worship God, you'll, you'll, you'll serve him and you'll serve whoever you worship. So it's important that we put our worship in the right, in the right place. Amen. Amen. Then he brought him to the Jerusalem, set him at the pin, uh, pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, there he goes again. You mean to tell me you're born? Again? Yeah, you, you better know. You remind him. <laughs> Thank God I was born again on that night. I bowed my knee to Jesus Christ in a hotel room. Whatever your situation was, I walked forward in a church service. I, 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 whatever, I read my Bible and I found I could be born again by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? But he says that to him. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And in the hands, they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus, see, he knows the word, does he not? Don't be, don't be crossed up. The devil knows the word of God. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when, when temptation comes to you, when, when uh, things come at you like that, get behind me, Satan. I ain't, get away from me in Jesus' name. We have that authority, do we not? Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Listen, you got to know he's going to try to keep coming back because that's his MO. That's his mode of operation. It keeps plugging you. You know, I, I, I've heard a message one time where Keith Moore was talking about, uh, what are you going to do? Things aren't going the way you think it should. You've been preaching the word. You've been speaking the word. They're not going the way. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What he's trying to get you to do is agree with him. We're to agree with God, not the devil. So here we are. What he, and the next, you know, before you know it, it keeps winding that thing in your mind. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The problems come. And all of a sudden you say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's almost like panic because you, listen, that's why we need to know the word of God. Run the devil off when he begins to get in your mind and get your thought life. Amen. Amen. We have to know this, my friends. This is called running your race, finishing your course, doing what God's called us to do. Amen. Because we don't want to be a, an afterthought, a has-been. A, a, you know, I've served God for 30, 40 years and then drop off. We have to do the same things. It's called practicing our faith, living our faith. You know, 
And we call that preaching the gospel, live the gospel, right? And, and Psalm 1 through 3, uh, uh, this is what he told uh, the psalmist says. And this will probably be my last scripture because running out of time this morning. Blessed is the man or the person who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Is Satan ungodly? Absolutely he's ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, say delight if you're there, his delight is in the law or the thoughts of the Lord. And in his law or thoughts, he meditates what? Once in a while when it's good, when I go to church for an hour and a half on Sunday, if, if I make it, uh, if I get there. No, day and night, you're thinking about the things of God. He will keep thee in perfect peace, Scripture says, whose mind is stayed upon thee, for you trust in him. Amen? So we keep our mind stayed upon him. We have to sweep out those old thoughts, those nasty things that try to uh, get in our mind. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, or his thoughts, and the law he meditates day and night. He shall be what? Like a tree, not the ones that break off and fall over and blow away, planted by the rivers of water. How many of you know a tree planted by the river will have deep, deep roots, and they'll be strong? A lot of trees will blow away and blow over, but, but not when you're planted by the, and, and, and your roots are strong in the foundation of God, Guess what? You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. You're not going to wither out, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. You want to prosper? Get your, get your, plant yourself in, and root yourself in the Word of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that it's so important to do that. And, you know, and, and I have other scriptures, but I'm just going to go right here. We have authority to do that. God has given us authority. And in Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, I, Jesus, give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by, shall by any means hurt you. That is so important that we use the word of God. And I'm going to continue on with this next week because there's so much here. There's so much that God says we can all have. He didn't do that just for a, a pastor or, or the uh, elder or, uh, or a uh, an apostle or, or a prophet or, or whatever. He did it for all of us. He gives us these things so we can, what, run our race and finish our course and do it in a way that's pleasing to him, but also brings victory to our life. Amen? Amen. You ought to just say, I'm, I'm, I, I'm walking in victory. Thanks be to God who always gives us, uh, causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. What a message. What a, what a thing to think about. See, these, when I do that, I get excited myself because I'm thinking about what he's done for us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time we've had together. I'm so excited about what you've done for us. You've given us power and authority over all the power of the enemy. You've, <laughs> you've given us weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And so we, we take those weapons and we walk our walk, our walk, and run our race and finish our course so it might be well with us when we stand before the, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we, I thank you for everyone the sound of my voice that they'll just draw into the things of God, press in, as Paul said, press forward and not backwards, not looking back, but pressing in to what you have for us in this day and this hour. We're called for such a time as this. Don't help us not to, to drop off, but to finish our race and finish our course. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to be with you. I'll see you next time.